Welcome to the short video on how to take apart and clean your carburetor for your Honda. Um, this is a horizontal a horizontal engine carburetor, but um, a lot of um, vertical engines are very similar. And um, so it is, um, if you want to see the long form video, you can see it, it, it um, probably will be coming shortly. Uh, let's just begin. Now obviously you have to remove the carburetor from the motorcycle. Um, I'm, I'm going to assume you know how to do that, but no, I don't have a motorcycle tag that this actually goes in, otherwise I would have filmed it. There's the cap. This cap will have unscrewed and it's going to have, and it's going to be attached to this carburetor slide. This can stay in your motorcycle. If you want to detach it, you just pull the cable out like this and this slide comes right off. And um, also, you can remove the fuel tap. Um, this one I've removed the fuel lines. Um, it's totally up to you. This is off of a Honda 50cc. The 90cc, 110s, etc., 100ccs are all the same. And like I said, um, other carburetors or other engines use a very similar carburetor. Before you begin, get yourself a very, very good screwdriver, good quality tip, maybe get a couple of them, some of them smaller, some bigger, because it is super important to have a tip that fits very well in these screws for the carburetor. These screws are very finicky in these Hondas, it's so easy to strip them out, they're very soft, annoyingly so. If you don't believe me, take a look at this one, and this one, take a look at that one right there, take a look at these, take a look at that one. You get the idea. So get yourself a very good screwdriver. And I also think that um, I recommend having one with a relatively fat handle so you get a decent amount of leverage when you're undoing the screws. You will also need a flat blade screwdriver and get one that is, of course, good quality as well. Carburetor cleaner is highly recommended. Petrol works too, but not quite as well because this stuff is stronger and your wife's toothbrush for scrubbing the inside. Before you begin, it's a good idea to scrub the outside of the carburetor, especially if there's a lot of dirt and grime on it, while it is still on the motorcycle because the air boot will be here. This will be attached to the intake manifold and the cap will be on, so that way you are not going to be getting you know, dirt and junk to fall in the carburetor. It just makes your life a little more difficult. The easiest way to do that is just blast it with a lot of water and scrub it with a lot of soap. Now for this video, I'm just going to be disassembling every single piece and not really talking a whole lot. So taking off the um, fuel tap, just back these screws out, remove the o-ring if in case it hasn't fallen out already. This is your fuel filter, it requires a 17 17mm spanner. Sometimes it can, there we go, sometimes it can be a bit tight. Undo the knot, there you go. Oftentimes there is a lot of junk accumulated at the bottom. Scrub that out and clean as necessary. This fuel filter is held in there fairly tightly, so wiggle it out. There you go. Check the o-ring, make sure it is not pinched or broken. Clean it out as necessary. And if you're going through a big clean out in the bowl, remove the o-ring because this will get damaged with carburetor cleaner. Now on to the bowl itself. This is the drain screw. For clean out there is no reason to remove it, but if for any reason your drain is leaky, you can take this out, spray some carburetor cleaner on a cloth and polish off the tip of this screw because sometimes it gets dirty and it doesn't seat right. Now onwards to the bowl. Grip the carburetor firmly, grip your screwdriver firmly, and make sure you get a good, a, you, you get a good connection, so to speak, against the screw. And then turn. These screws, as I've said, are super, super easy to damage. Once both screws are undone, if you haven't drained the bowl, it will start leaking everywhere. Just be aware of that. But there's no need to drain it, it's not like it's required. It will just make more of a mess. Then 
there's your two screws. Some of them have lock washers, some don't. These obviously don't. Now with the carburetor bowl, you can leave the gasket in as long as it's not damaged and it is, was not and it was not leaking. Um, but if you're going to spray out the carburetor cleaner with massive amounts of cleaner and you're going to be scrubbing a lot, I recommend removing this gasket because it will be damaged by the carburetor cleaner itself. The easiest way to clean out the bowl, I find, is just to spray a little bit of carburetor cleaner in there and to leave a puddle and then, with your toothbrush, just use the puddle use the puddle to wet the, the bristles of the toothbrush and just keep scrubbing and scrubbing. A very important part to clean is that little divot or that little area right there because that area can accumulate junk and that will cause your needle in the bowl not to seat properly. So it's good to clean that out like so. You can scrub the inside here too, totally up to you. Now moving onward to the base, this pin right here, it's not fastened by anything, just push, grab and pull. Now the bowl, hold this upright and pull it straight up. You will notice there is a needle that is in there. That needle can very easily fall out, like so. This is your float needle. Make sure that this tip has not been impacted. If it looks like it is not a completely perfect triangle, so to speak, and it looks like it has been kind of flattened, then replace the needle. Check your float bowl for cracks and for any kind of damage, or if it just looks old, you might want to consider replacing it. By the way, these are not adjustable float bowls, and I actually like these a lot easier for stock bikes because it is one less thing to worry about. Now on to the jets. With your flat blade screwdriver, slide it in this slot like this, as you can see. Make sure it is sitting flat because it's very easy to slip and then push it together and start undoing the jet. Now this jet is actually two pieces. Now if this happens, then undo this one and put it on the side for now. To get this piece out now, what we will need to do is put some paper towels over it, grip it with some pliers and undo it. Now you can unscrew it. place here for now. There is another collar inside. It is a brass collar. There is no need to push this out, but if you are going to be vigorously cleaning your carburetor, it might be a good idea to stick something through and push it out, because it could fall out if you don't do so. And losing this is actually a very bad thing. Pilot jet, same basic process. Remove. Again, be very careful, they're very easy to damage, these jets. Now we're going to start with the needle jet. You see how there's lots of little holes. Your jet might have different amounts of holes, that's okay. You're going to take your guitar string, or your wire, whichever it is, poke it through the hole, go through both sides of the hole, but don't run through hard at all. Just use your fingers very, very lightly and repeat for the next hole until all of them have been gone through. Next what I like to do, you can use a small cotton swab and run it through the center, spraying a little bit of carburetor cleaner on the cotton swab. Then to really make sure that it's clean, what I like to do is I put this over the straw of the carburetor cleaner and plug the end of the hole and spray. This usually forces lots of carburetor cleaner through these holes, getting the rest of the junk and dissolving whatever varnish might remain. Then spray straight through the jet to blast anything that might be residing in the middle. Repeat the same basic process for the main jet, or you can just spray it. Sometimes though, if you just spray carburetor cleaner, it's not enough to get rid of the really caked on junk that might accumulate. So that's why I use the wire. Repeat the same basic process to poke the wire through, but don't be too vigorous and don't scratch it. And repeat for going from the top down. Poking through and cleaning it. 
then spray from the top down just like before. This stuff is very strong so I recommend having gloves but me I'm lazy and so I don't use gloves. Now that's basically it for your jets. Now with the last bits that um, you're going to be cleaning are the carburetor itself. You notice how there is a passage like this? Well that passage actually goes right here. So to make sure that is really clean you can simply put the carburetor cleaner in here, point it away from your face of course, and spray for a few seconds. That will blast out a lot of whatever is in this passage should there be anything. But if you go straight through here, it's going to go out the top and it's not really going to do much. So I find it's actually not necessary. The most you can do is, in, is spray into this passage and all will be good. Now there's no reason to take either of these screws out as these are. this is your air bleed screw and this is your idle adjustment screw. There's also no reason to take out the choke plate and rebuild it unless there is actual play in the choke plate itself. That happens with very high mileage bikes and is not common at all, so I'm not going to address it in the short video. And now, putting it back together. First, I like to wash my hands and make sure that they are nice and clean, because you can dirty things when putting things back together. First, install this. Put this in, the small side is going to go down as long as the carburetor looks like this, but it's upside down, so technically this is actually small side up. But small side down, because you're looking at it upside down. Drop it in. Tighten the needle jet. Thread it by your fingers. Make sure it starts to go in smoothly. Once it seems to bottom out, take a look through here and you can notice a little brass thing sticking out the top. That is good, that means that little collar has seated properly. If you don't see this, double check to see if it is binding on anything and then try again. Next, take your main jet, thread my fingers and put in. Then your pilot jet or your idle jet and thread it in. This one sometimes gets stuck. Next, take your screwdriver, make sure it is sitting flat inside the jet and torque slowly. You don't need a lot of torque, just cinch it down. Next, go to the pilot jet and give it a cinch down. And that is all you need. Onward to the float. What you're going to do, it's a little tricky if you have non-dexterous hands, it's going to take this top, this little flange, and you're going to slide it in between here like this. So you see how I'm slide, I slide that in here and it is now stuck inside there. That is what you want to do. Here is a close up of what it looks like when it is properly seated. I'm sorry for the rain noise, uh, not much I can do about that. Now this is where you want the float needle to go in. Lower the float needle so that it goes in there and you can let the float bowl drop once it's in. Grab the shaft, slide the shaft into the hole, line up the float bowl so that the shaft goes through it and then through the other side. This is the way that the float bowl is supposed to be sitting, at that slight downward or upward incline, however you want to look at it. You can push it down a little and it will spring back up. That means that the float needle is doing its job. If the bowl is all the way down and it doesn't seem to want to spring back up, there's probably a problem with the float needle and you probably need to replace it. Now putting the bowl back on, what you're going to do is align this hole right here and this hole right here. This is what it looks like from the outside, if that helps any. You can also see that there's only two screw holes, so there's only one way for this to work. Now, start hand threading the screws in. Once you get hand tight, now you can torque it down. 
It only needs a cinching. These screws are not very tight at all. Next, you can put the drain screw back in. And again, just lightly cinch it down. It doesn't need a lot of torque. Next, take a little basket. And it doesn't just sit in there, you actually have to wiggle it in. Sometimes it takes a bit of fiddling around. It sticks up about this far once it's properly seated. Take the gasket and then take your plug. Be careful when you start to hand thread the plug in because it's actually very easy to cross thread this plug and the bowl. Once you get it finger tightened and you're sure that you're not cross threading it, just give it a cinch down with a 17mm spanner, or socket, or whatever. It doesn't need to be that tight. If you over tighten it, you can actually fracture the housing, so don't do that. And lastly, install your fuel tap o-ring, stick the fuel tap on, but be very careful with these screws, because these screws are very, very fine thread, and if you cross thread them, it is actually, uh, what you can do is damage the bowl. And that is a bad thing. You're going to have to order a new bowl at minimum. Little tip though, if you do damage the bowl, you can actually order a Chinese one and put it on the bottom of your Japanese or your original carburetor and it will work fine. What I actually like to do is I like to make sure I don't tighten these down too much at first and then I put the carburetor back on the scooter. Um, so if it leaks, then I can tighten it some more. But if I over tighten it at first, I risk cracking or stripping the bowl. Lastly, when you're attaching, when you're putting the carburetor back on, the main thing you want to do is make sure that the slide, that this little rectangular area, goes on the same side as this screw. This is the idle adjustment screw. If you put the bowl, if you put the slide in backwards, like so, it will fall in and you think you're okay, but you can see it is stuck on wide open throttle. That is a bad thing. You want to make sure that this area of the slide, this little rectangular area, is on the same side as the idle screw. Now that way you can see the slide goes all the way down to the bottom and you will not be stuck at full throttle. And that's basically it, your carburetor for your key in. If you want to see the longer video or you don't quite understand something, go right ahead and go to it. Link is in the description. That's all. I'm Mini Motorman. Bye.